Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy comprised one of the most popular comedic duos to ever grace the screen. Though the two didn't know each other very well when they first started working together under the watchful eye of producer Hal Roach, they developed a sincere friendship over the decades of their professional partnership. By the time Oliver passed away in the 50s, Stan considered him a good friend and was so devastated he never wanted to work again. Join Facts First as we explore why Laurel and Hardy left Stan Laurel in despair. There were few comedic actors of Hollywood's golden age more prolific and beloved than Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Together, the two comprised the duo of Laurel and Hardy. They catapulted to fame over the course of the 1920s and remained successful in some capacity until the end of their creative partnership in the 1950s. Their long-time partnership was put to an end only because Oliver Hardy's death. Though he and Stan Laurel had barely known each other when they first started working together, they'd become very good friends during the time they spent together. When Oliver passed away, Stan was so devastated, he retired. Throughout their partnership, Stan and Oliver appeared in over 100 films together. The two became so iconic that most people could recognize them just by seeing their silhouettes. Stan was the smaller and skinnier of the two, while Oliver Hardy was burly and big. This contrast in size contributed to the comedy. While many duos over the course of Hollywood history started out with amicable relationships and then grew to hate each other, Stan and Oliver were essentially strangers when they were first put together by producer Hal Roach in a film. The first time they worked on a film was in 1921 and didn't work on another one again until 1926. By the late 20s, Hal Roach realized the pair made an incredibly great duo on screen and that audiences wanted to see more of them together. In the initial years that Laurel and Hardy spent together performing, the two were so busy with their respective roles in the duo, they didn't have much time to get to know each other. Of the two, Stan was the one with more creative input behind the scenes. While he was busy toiling away on scripts or editing scenes, Oliver was out playing golf with his real-life friends. Even though the two weren't friends when they started out, they found more time later in their careers to socialize and eventually developed a very close relationship. Laurel and Hardy toured in their later years quite a bit more than they had during their earlier and more successful days. Once the two found themselves taking frequent train trips together, they found the time to finally get to know one another. During this time, they realized they actually had much more in common than they initially thought and developed a true friendship. By the end of their creative partnership, Laurel and Hardy were friends both in real life and on screen. By the time of Oliver Hardy's death, Stan Laurel had grown so attached to his longtime partner that he went into retirement. From Stan's perspective, there was no reason to continue performing in any capacity if he didn't have Oliver by his side. Stan's health had also been decreasing in his later years, and it was less than a decade after his retirement that he reunited with his former partner in death. Stan and Oliver were already in their 30s by the time they found success. One of the biggest hits of their career as a duo was The Battle of the Century, released in 1927. Before working together, the two had come from relatively different walks of life. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more about Laurel and Hardy. Stan Laurel was born in England and came from a family well-versed in theater. This led to Stan pursuing his own career on stage, though little did his family know that the young man would develop a predilection for comedy. Stan's penchant for comedy saw him become an understudy of a vaudeville troupe led by notable performer Fred Carnot. This opened up the opportunity for Stan to make his way towards the U.S., where he decided he wanted to stay. While there, he hooked up with producer Hal Roach, who began using him as a performer in some of his films. This is how Stan was eventually paired up with Oliver Hardy, and the pairing proved to be lightning in a bottle. Audiences adored the comedic pairing of Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, from their contrasting physical appearances to their warring personalities. Although their characters would often quarrel during their films, they'd always come back together as friends by the end of the day. Oliver Hardy was raised in the U.S., and his family had no background in entertainment. Instead, Oliver simply developed an interest in the performing arts on his own. He was a gigantic lover of the cinema. Although Oliver had begun attending school with the intent of becoming a lawyer, he ended up dropping out after deciding he wanted to open a movie theater instead. His time operating his cinema gave him a chance to experience all the work that was being done by other comedic actors of the time. Eventually, he decided he wanted to try his own hand at performing. In Florida, Oliver appeared in some films for a production company called The Lubin Company, but he later ended up in Hollywood, where producer Hal Roach paired him up with Stan Laurel. 
Soon after the release of the duo's first features together, they became one of the most popular comedic acts in the industry. They continued working with Hal Roach until 1941, at which point they made the move to 20th Century Fox. Their time with Hal Roach was their most successful time period, though they still continued to sell tickets while working with 20th Century Fox. But their celebrity status had decreased even further by the 50s. They spent much of that time touring Britain and other parts of Europe. Even though Laurel and Hardy had decreased in mainstream popularity, they were still beloved and revered by critics and fans. They never compromised their integrity, and both were the same beloved performers in the 50s that the public had come to love at the height of their fame. Their time in the 50s made them even closer than ever before, and this made it all the more tragic when Oliver Hardy passed away later in the decade. He passed away August 7, 1957. The legendary comedic performer's death was caused by a stroke. Stan Laurel was sick at the time as well, and was kept by his own illness from attending the funeral of his longtime friend. This exacerbated the impact Oliver's death had on him. However, he eventually recovered from his own illness and went on to survive Oliver by nearly a decade. Despite the fact that Stan survived Oliver, he vowed to never work again. Instead, he spent the remainder of his years in retirement. Stan also apparently became very involved in the Laurel and Hardy fan community in the years after his retirement, and always made sure to answer letters from fans with personalized replies. That is, until he went blind during his later years. He passed away February 23, 1965. In the later years of his life, Stan claimed he felt completely lost without the man he had spent the prior decades with in showbiz. Perhaps that's why he chose to dedicate so much of his time to interacting with fans and reminiscing about the days he shared with his creative partner. Now it's time to hear from you. What part of this story surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.